The John Wayne movie The Alamo was filmed in Brackettville, Texas in 1959. Over 50 years later, the set still exists, and we're going to find it. Texas is full of lost history. From lost cemeteries to abandoned buildings. From the infamous to the obscure. Hitch a ride and travel across the Lone Star State, looking for hints of Texas' colorful past. Our lost history. This is Expedition Texas, and we're gonna find it. I've always heard about Alamo Village in Brackettville, Texas, but what I didn't know is that several years ago it had closed down and fallen off the map completely. In 1959, a rancher named Happy Shahan worked with John Wayne's production company to construct a full-scale replica of the Alamo on Shahan's ranch. The set also included a three-quarter scale replica of the rest of the Alamo compound, as well as a separate village to be used in the filming. The set would go on to be featured in dozens of well-known feature films and to become a tourist attraction between projects. Happy Shahan died in 1996, leaving his wife Virginia to care for the property until her death in 2009. After her death, the property closed for good. The Shahan's son, Tully Shahan, still lives in Brackettville and agreed to share the story of Alamo Village with us. You gotta go back to the early 50s. Uh, mom, mom and dad lived here ranched here, uh, was in business here. And there was a lot of things that was going on in Hollywood at the same time. Republic Pictures, about that time in the 50s, mid 50s, they broke with John Wayne. Uh, Mr. Wayne broke off with Republic. He takes the, the script rights to the movie The Alamo, okay? He wanted, it was one of his dreams, was to film the movie The Alamo. So he takes it with him, and, and then he sends a man uh, to Spain, and they start doing all this research. And from what everything Dad could find out was that they were going to film the movie in Mexico. So when uh, my dad and uh, the people found out about it, they started uh, lobbying, I guess is a pretty good word, for that movie coming here or coming to this area. And then they came, you know, and came and started. They spent about a year, nearly a year here before they ever turned the cameras on. Right after the filming, uh, there were people that wanted to come see it. Mainly on Saturdays and Sundays is when most people would come. Yeah, in the summers, it averaged about 20,000 people over the summers. Johnny Rodriguez was in jail and Joaquin Jackson, a Texas Ranger from here, brought him over and said, Happy, this kid can sing. You need to help him. So uh, Dad, for two and a half summers, he helped him out. And while they were here, Mr. Hall, Tom T, heard Johnny singing. And he was a Hispanic and, and uh, had a great voice. And uh, he thought, man, this, this kid might could sell a lot of records and be a star. So he eventually, uh, Johnny eventually went to Nashville and started touring with Tom T. My dad, he promoted Alamo Village seven days a week, wherever he was. If he was in a restaurant in Tyler, Texas or Odessa, he gave them a card and a brochure to come to Alamo Village. And when he died in 1996, that fire was lost. Uh, and mom tried to keep it going. As mom got older, uh, we, the, my two sisters and I tried to get her to close it, uh, but she just couldn't do it. You know, their, their world was pretty much around Alamo Village and promoting it and seeing it grow. And, but uh, there needs to be another glow. There needs to be another dream that someone picks up, has got the money and the time uh, to carry it, you know. We met up with Tully Shahan at his office in Brackettville so he could show us the way to Alamo Village. When you come through the gate to go to Alamo Village while it was open, uh, you would pay your fee and they would give you a brochure. Okay. And then uh, that brochure, you would open it and it would show you 
uh, of all the buildings in the Alamo that was there. This shows you, of course, the legend and how, where all the buildings are and which, which uh, store, which uh, uh, entertainment was in each building. And then on the back, it show you uh, the movies and the miniseries that's all been filmed there. And then there's a picture of the village, uh, the way it exists today. And that's a postcard you could buy down at the village. The, this is during the construction of the Alamo. This is the Alamo Chapel. Uh, you can see the front of the Alamo here, but that uh, is still standing and is right there. But these walls were made out of adobe brick that were laid out here, sun dried and then taken to the site to build walls. And then here's some other just pictures of, of my dad and Johnny Rodriguez who uh, became a recording star. Yeah. Well, I'm excited about seeing Alamo Village. I've heard about it all my life. Good. And I want to see what's left of it. I guess it's all still there, huh? It's all still there. Well, let's go yeah. check it out. Okay, all let's right. go. Thank you. And then it was time to find Alamo Village. Oh wow, so here it is, the Alamo. This is it. This is it. We're in Brackettville, Texas, where the set from the 1960 film The Alamo still stands. The set later became a tourist attraction, operated by Happy Shahan. However, in 2009, after the deaths of Happy and his wife Virginia, Alamo Village closed its gates for good. Today, we're with Happy Shahan's son, Tully, to get a look at what remains of the legendary movie set. village, uh, we call the village, uh, that's where the San Antonio de Bear was, uh, where uh, it was the city of San Antonio for the Alamo uh, in, in Mr. Wayne's picture. For a lot of other movies, it's been uh, the major set, and, uh, but it's, as far as that goes, it's, there's 300, about 300 yards apart, and, but the Alamo compound is where the the original compound was with the walls and everything up as it as it was in 1836 when when all this was happening. We drove for what seemed like miles on an old gravel road and as we started to get close to Alamo Village we started to see pins on the side of the road. These were built in 1959 to house all the livestock for the movie. Okay these pins were built for the Alamo uh, to house all of their livestock and their uh, the longhorn cattle they had, the horses they had, and a little further down the road, we came to the Alamo compound. Well, this is the this is the Alamo compound here, and, and that embankment that's where one of the cannons were during the movie The Alamo. Okay. But but they blew that corner up. Uh, really? Yeah, that was all blown up in the movie The Alamo. Yeah, Bob, this is there. Uh, this is where a lot of uh, the movie The Alamo came through here. Oh wow, so here it is, the Alamo. This is it, right wow. here. This is where it stands, you bet. Uh, that, that is the duplicate of exactly the replica in San Antonio. Really? I guess like anybody who's been to the real Alamo, when you first walk up on the Alamo, you're a little taken aback by the fact that you're surrounded by all these modern big buildings in downtown San Antonio. In fact, I think there's like a, a wax museum and a Ripley's, believe it or not, right across the street. So uh, it's hard to get an idea of what it was like in the 1800s when the legendary battle took place. Unless you've been to Alamo Village, here they have a full replica of the Alamo and all of the surrounding walls built to three-quarter scale, and it's one of the largest movie sets ever built. You see that uh, there's a window that's been rocked in up there. Yeah. There's an original window there and an original window there. And they film that in, they fill that in for other movies. But when they would film these people, or John Wayne on the top of the Alamo, 
they, would they took that cutout of the top 12 foot of that right corner and they put it on the ground over here and they could film on the ground looking like they were 20 foot in the air. <laughs> and this is the inside. Right here, this is the room that Wayne threw the, uh, he threw the uh, fire into that exploded. Really? Yeah. And Bob, you can see how, you can see how thick this wall is. This is the same thickness of the wall in San Antonio. I mean, you just, you see how thick that is? I mean, that's, that goes, you can see just by the way it's built. Uh, Mr. Wayne wanted this to be exactly like the one in San Antonio. How much did it cost to put this on this, what was a ranch? I was all, I've always heard it was a $5 million bill before he, before he started. Wow. There was a, they used to sing a, mo a, a song down here. Uh, they'd say, hey, John Wayne, they're killing your checkbook below. <laughs> You'll remember the Alamo. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, this was built for the movie Bandolero. This is metal here. Yeah. That's wood, that's plywood. Oh. See that? Yeah. We're in Brackettville, Texas, visiting one of the largest movie sets ever constructed. Our guide is Tully Shahan, son of Texas legend Happy Shahan. Tully has already shown us the Alamo compound, but tells us there's much more to see in the nearby village. So we walk into the old village, and even though the roads are overgrown and some of the buildings are showing their age, it wouldn't take much work to shoot a western on these streets right now. First, Tully took us into the old church building. We're headed to the church house. The church? Let's, go to church. Right, let's go to church. <laughs> so we're here at church, huh? We're here at church. Oh, wow. It's got about 18 foot walls in here and uh, adobe on the floor, adobe in the walls. And today it's warm in here. Really, this church was used uh, twofold in the movie, The Alamo. It was used as the basement where they went down and got the explosives. Yeah. Well, come to, how they filmed it, they put them on the second floor uh -huh. and filmed them walking down to the first floor. Through these doors is the stairs in here. Those are the stairs that they would use to come down okay. uh, in the movie The Alamo to look like they were going in the basement. They had a lot of, uh, they had a lot of barrels and a lot of explosives over here and mm -hmm. Chill Wills was uh, smoking or he, he, he did some funny in the movie with uh, with he had no oh, he was holding a torch I think and uh, they he nearly blew the thing up but but uh, th this is where they g got some explosives during the movie The Alamo. Is this a coffin? Yes, that's a coffin. Am I gonna find dead people in here? Well, there may be. I'm not sure. It's nailed shut, so I guess uh, whoever's in there is in there for good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll leave them alone. I don't want to disturb them. <laughs> Next, it was time to visit the old jailhouse. Now, if you've ever seen the movie Bandolero, you're probably already familiar with this jail. And this is the jail. Wow. Bob, this was built for the movie Bandolero. And uh, Dean Martin was in here uh, with his uh, brothers and well, all the people that robbed the bank and yeah. and these things were you can you can see this is metal here. Yeah, that's wood. That's plywood. Oh. See that? Yeah. Yeah, and that, that, that's how they could cheapen things up. Of course, that's metal, yeah. but this is plywood. And then they had an area. They had an area back here in this in this area where there is no. This is where they could put their cameras, yeah. see? So they, they constructed with the idea of, of filming movies course, back here, yeah. you know? The hanging gallows were outside this, outside this window right here. Yeah. And uh, they were all set up out there and, and uh, uh, Dean Martin and them were all in here and, and uh, the gallows were out there. And Next, Tully started walking toward the doors of one of these little old buildings on the set and said, there's someone I want you to meet. 
I thought we were on a closed down tourist attraction slash movie set. I didn't know there was anybody out there. But it turns out there's a fellow there named Rich Carilla who has been working at Alamo Village since the 1980s. And even though the village is closed, he continues to come out and work in his office on the set. Bob, I'd like for you to meet a fellow named Richard Carilla who's worked uh, here at the village for about 30 years. And uh, he's uh, got a degree in cinematography from... Penn State University, and he's uh, he's really a wealth of knowledge about really? Alamo Village. Hi, Richard. Hey, how are you, it's Bob Mullen? Hi, Bob. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet nice you, to Richard. Meet you. So I'm looking around, and I see a lot of memorabilia in here. A lot of junk. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and and he tells us this is sort of your haven. This is where right. you uh, yeah. keep some uh, mementos from the films that well, have been made here. Mementos and plans and uh, just about everything at this point that I get involved with in relation to Alamo Village. Do you mind showing us around a little bit? No, not at all. Where do we need to start? Start with that, since we've just been up there. Oh, That's, wow. Uh, that is the production designer... Uh, Alfred Ibarra from John Wayne's The Alamo and his first drawing of the Alamo Church. Wow. So that you just walked through. The, the date that we're seeing here would be uh, 1950, probably 57 or 58. Right. Um, are, is this a cannonball? Oh, sure. Oh. It's a 24 pounder. <laughs> it's a <Yeah>. little. <laughs> <laughs> you, you couldn't do this with a real one, I guess. This is actually from the new Alamo movie. This is the, from John Lee Hancock's film, which I was very much a part of. Really? And uh, it's one of my little mementos from the film. Is, Great. As well as grape and canister and huh. a couple other props. Wow. Now, this one's, this one's, this one's very light. Yeah. <laughs> so you're a, you're a real collector here. You've got... Well, let's say I'm a, I, I assimilate this stuff and yeah. people give it to me. And you remember how your dad was? E everybody that came in had something for him. And he had all this. That's how it's sort of gotten here. But this is a pre-visualization. You never stop thinking about what the plans can be mm -hmm. for the place. And, uh, and we've certainly gone ahead with, with some dreams and goals, at least on paper. Uh, but here, something I have done with this, particularly with the plan, is uh, the church and the hotel and the cantina would get restored to the way John Wayne and Alfred Ibarra originally designed them. Because every movie came in and changed things. Right. This is a, the classic John Wayne photograph of the front of the Alamo and... and uh, his Mexican army on, on the hill in the background, on the left, yeah. Yeah. and his whole cast and crew set up as the defenders of the Alamo. I'm glad we stopped by here. This has been very interesting. Thank well, you for showing pleasure. us around. My pleasure. This if I can great. do anything else, holler. There's another cannon over there, made out of wood. People can't visit this anymore. I know. It's sad. It is sad. It's really yeah. sad. We're in Brackettville, Texas, touring Alamo Village. After gaining fame as one of the largest movie sets ever built, the site doubled as a tourist attraction. All the while, Hollywood kept calling and using the set for great westerns. But meanwhile, Alamo Village was busy creating its own stars. Johnny Rodriguez was a stagecoach driver and performer at Alamo Village as a young man. But when country star Tom T. Hall heard him sing, it didn't take long before the world knew his name. And it all started in the cantina at Alamo Village. Come on in, this is a cantina. Oh, wow. I feel like I step back into the old west there, here. This looks like the old west. Let's, is, let's step up and order a drink, warm up a little bit. Uh -huh. Oh, this is great. This is a brass bar, and, and uh, this is the original that they've had here for many, many, many years. So, is this the stage that Johnny Rodriguez got his uh, start that's, on? That's the stage right there. Wow. Do not shoot the entertainers <laughs> or the host. Finally, it was time to visit the John Wayne Museum at Alamo Village, and I really wasn't prepared to react the way I did when I saw it. Whoa! There's a cannon in there. There's a big cannon in here. Look at that. This is just to look at. Because uh -huh. you can see right here it's made out of wood. I'll be darned. 
50 plus years of history is sitting there in southwest Texas slowly being lost. Is there hope? And if so, what is it that that all this can come back? Well, without people like you to show to show what exists here, uh, mm -hmm. no one's going to be able to see it unless someone will come along and and maybe refurbish it, purchase this place, or uh, try to do something with it. it's got a vision for for development of it. My hope is that someday someone will come along and purchase Alamo Village, the ranch, and bring it back to what it once was and help preserve this piece of Texas history, but also of film history in Texas. Tons of film history happened there. And the ultimate goal, I think, is that someday you and I can take our kids there and uh, show them this piece of Texas history and film history in Texas.